It's my utmost for his highest. <laughs> I still think about the title that I came up with for my version of utmost was my uttermost for his utmost. <laughs> Who knows? We may, I may get to that and write that someday. But until the Lord says yay, you know, I have lots of projects that I sometimes pursue, sometimes don't. <laughs> I think I have 60 or 80 blogs that confuse, no, <laughs> that are all over the place that uh, usually get updated once a week. And it's fun, but I pray that, you know, some of the other projects that I like to do, that God allows me to do, and I get a chance to use my talent in writing to share things that sometimes, you know, I really would like to you know, take utmost, you know, and apply it even more so to our day, you know, like, I know I have all these different devotionals, and each one seems to be very precise in what they do and accomplish for me, you know, and I, I hope the same is happening for you, that it's like God speaking to you, because <laughs> it is the Lord speaking to me, and like, utmost is very surgical for me, it goes really deep, it always cuts to the quick, you know, it comes really <clears throat> down to the gut issues, you know, and Tozer too, Tozer tends to go for the heart and change the mind, you know, and I, I like the two because they're different and yet they both attack, you know, and confront, you know, the issues of life, you know, as we deal with them, but what the Lord may say today, I don't know, <laughs> in utmost, let's find out. Uh. Always now. We beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. 2 Corinthians 6.1 The grace you had yesterday will not do for today. Grace is the overflowing favor of God. You can always reckon it is there to draw upon. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. That is where the test for patience comes from. Are you failing the grace of God there? Are you saying, oh well, I won't count on it this time. It's not a question of praying and asking God to help you. It is taking the grace of God now. Letting God apply that grace to you today. We make prayer the preparation for work. It is never that in the Bible. Prayer is the ex exercise of drawing on the grace of God. It is conversation. Don't say, I will endure this until I can get away and pray. Pray now. Draw on the grace of God. Ask Him in the moment of need. Prayer is the most practical thing. It is not the reflex action of devotion. Prayer should be direct and immediate conversation. Prayer is the last thing in which we learn to draw on God's grace, sadly. In stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in all these things manifest a drawing upon the grace of God that will make you a marvel not only to yourselves but to all those around you. Don't draw upon grace soon, but now. The one word in the spiritual vocabulary is in the scripture, now, today. Let circumstances bring you where they will, but keep drawing on the grace of God in every conceivable condition you may be in. One of the greatest proofs that you are drawing on the grace of God is that you can be humiliated without manifesting the slightest trace of anything but His grace. Having nothing, never reserve anything. Pour out the best you have and always be poor, and God will fill in. Never be diplomatic and careful about the treasure God gives. This is poverty triumphant. And you know, it's a shame that living in a world and especially the society that I live in it is focused on possession and on prosperity and on the accumulation of things and rarely do people realize how much they are affected by those things until their emotions become challenged by them say like when uh, devastation hits like if their house becomes flooded and they lose all their possessions suddenly they are devastated 
And yet, what are those possessions? The Christian who knows the balance you see sometimes reacting to those lessons in life and simply saying, thank God no one died, and we can always replace the possessions. So there is a reality that God wants to instill in each of us, which is accept what God gives you, but pour it out for the use of others. Always recognize that God gave you today's grace, meaning grace to be alive even, is a gift from him. The fact that you can breathe and move and do what you are doing today is grace. God could just say, let's end it now, and poof, everything would be dissolved in a fervent heat. He has never had to, or is he restricted from doing anything he wants to do. We, we like to pretend or contend that, oh, well, God will only do it this way because he wrote it. To be blunt, you know, there's times where if you look and see what he was saying to Moses, you know, or you look and see what he's saying to Abraham about wiping some people out, you know, I think that you might find that God can do anything he wants to do whenever he wants to, you know, and we wouldn't be around to argue about it. <laughs> so the point is not to make it as though we need to be terrified of God, but rather assured by what he has promised he would do. And that's the point of why we don't get wrapped up in possessions because he said he would take care of us he would provide for all our needs so as he gives us grace for the day to exist to be to have what we've owned what we think we were purchasing with our own effort we can turn that around and recognize that god gave it to us and we could use that for his kingdom and we could prosper from giving it away what we thought we need to possess today. I personally don't look at the prosperity doctrine and I don't believe in it, but I do accept one principle from God. I am the richest man I know of in the world and the most poor that I have ever conceived to meet at the same time. And it's not just spiritual riches and it's not just physical properties in either perspective. I honestly feel like that if there was ever anything I wanted, I could ask God and he'd give it to me. I don't want them. I don't want them in my way. I want my relationship with God to maintain and to be better tomorrow than it is today and to get more intimate so that one day I could walk away from all of this and not look back like Lot's wife and have longing in my heart for anything that's here. I have none. I'm looking forward to going home to a place that Jesus prepared for me. So you can keep what you got, or you could start to give it away and discover that God's got something better in store. I hope you find the truth of what Chambers is saying and what God is inspiring in each one of us, you know, because the days are numbered. We are in the last days and we are in the end times and the rapture will happen. And those that are prepared will go home. And those that aren't, won't. And how that works for you, I can't tell you. But I can tell you for me, I'm keeping as light a touch and occupying as little as possible as I can until he comes. And just doing what he tells me each day to do as I walk in his word, share in devotionals, and compare together with you and I in devotionals his message to us. He's coming soon. Are you ready?